I'm in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. It's a beautiful morning. And before I get started in this video about Hugh Jackman, it's an interview where somebody's asking Hugh Jackman what he thinks about God. And I took little snippets out. So I'm going to play a, a part where Hugh talks and then I'll respond and then play another part and then I'll respond and so on. But before I get started, I just wanted to say that concerning the YouTube videos in the comments section, I do read all the comments. I see them all. I just decided to stop engaging in comments uh, because of just how busy I am. And anybody that wants to contact me is free to contact me via email, which is cardboardboxchurch at gmail.com. And that is in the description box of all my YouTube videos. And so I encourage you to get a hold of me that way. I respond to emails and I also get on the phone and, and pray for people and minister to them that way also. So, uh, and then there's also uh, a link to my website, cardboardboxchurch.com in the description box of this video. I encourage you to go there also and see what I'm doing there. There's videos there that are not on YouTube and also there's a blog page there and also I have a telegram page there's a link to my telegram page also cardboard box church telegram page uh, at, at the bottom of each one of my website pages and also in the description box of this video I want to encourage you to join that also and follow what I'm doing there it's the only other social media site that I'm on I'm not on Facebook anymore or Instagram uh, just my YouTube channel, my website, and then Telegram. And so, so thanks for for uh, leaving comments on YouTube. I appreciate it, and uh, and thanks for sewing it to Cobble Box Church. If you are helped by any of these videos, then this is where you sew. That's the wisest thing to do. My wife and I continue to give a high percentage of our income to the work of God's kingdom, advancing His kingdom on the earth. We've never stopped, and so it's very wise to sow into that work. And so, if the videos are helping you, uh, that'll it'll you'll see a harvest. And there's nothing wrong with expecting a harvest from where you sow. The Word of God says He gives seed to the sower, and so we should expect a harvest. We, we're just not giving in order to get something in return from somebody. Uh, in other words, when you give to somebody. You shouldn't have this attitude, you now owe me, and now you gotta give back to me. That shouldn't be the attitude, but we should have the attitude of expecting a harvest from where we sow, because that's biblical. He gives seed to the sower. So let's get started on this interview. The first question that the man is asking you, Jackman, and you, Jackman, by the way, is one of my favorite actors. That's why when I found this, this video on YouTube, <clears throat> I watched the whole thing, and uh and I, I thought it was interesting because you jackman he's not a christian although he was raised that way i don't believe he ever had a born again born again experience he was just raised in a christian family uh being encouraged to believe that without the relationship but he is uh I, he comes across to me as a very nice guy and uh and i like a lot of his answers they they come from the standpoint of somebody who doesn't personally know Jesus but but at the same time like Jesus said you are not far you are not far from the kingdom of heaven <laughs> he's close and so I encourage you to pray for you Jackman so the first question this man asks is what do you uh, think who is God what is God what do you think about him for me is my idea of consciousness uh, God is not a thing uh, something you can necessarily see it is within everything and outside of everything so I believe that God the absolute whatever you want to call it the self uh, is unchanging okay so the first thing right off the bat is Hugh Jackman says he's talking about consciousness right there to me is evidence that 
you is he he's interested in spiritual matters but he doesn't know jesus personally because that's that it's really the christ consciousness that many of us many of us have been familiarized with if we're if we're staying in tune so to speak with uh new age or hollywood whatever christ consciousness is the big thing where they understand that christ or god because some people some people get offended when you say christ consciousness because they don't want any any uh comparison to jesus christ they just want to say god so like most people a lot of people know that god is in everything and that's true god is in everything even the unredeemed because jesus is the author of life so god is jesus christ is in everything and everyone and what happens is god reveals jesus christ to people so when a person gets saved god is revealing jesus christ in that person okay and that's the difference between the unbeliever and a believer the believer jesus christ has been revealed and and then you're like wow this is amazing and then you start to learn you read the bible and you're learning you're learning and you're reading the Bible from the perspective of somebody that now now knows that Jesus Christ is alive that he he's a real figure who who died for the sins of the whole world and rose from the dead he's alive and he comes to live in you by his spirit so so the consciousness is just like consciousness basically means you're aware of your surroundings you know you exist you're awake you 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 realize that that uh, this is a a unique creation, and that there's a there's a uh, there's a creative force behind all of this, and so it's people are acknowledging that by when they're saying consciousness, and so so I like you Jackman's answer because it's it, it's a humble answer. Of somebody that understands that, that there is a God but he hasn't come to know Jesus yet so let's listen to the next part pretty much everything I'm seeing has an element of God but you couldn't call it God because everything changes you me uh, where we're sitting this river this planet has a life cycle birth death but my feeling about God is that it exists beyond that beyond uh, those laws of nature it was somehow it is somehow uh, separate to the laws of time, matter, space. And that's about as close as I've come to any realization of what God is. So you don't see God as a bearded chap up in the sky telling us to be good and if we don't we'll go to hell and if we are we'll come to heaven. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't see God as a bearded chap, although I, I used to for many years. I, I was brought up in a uh, Church of England uh, family went to Sunday school. My, my father's quite religious. He wasn't until he was about 26, I believe, maybe 28, and he went to a Billy Graham crusade and was converted with my mum. My mum did the usual thing, which is after about six months, started to you know, wean off it a little bit. My father never did and is incredibly religious and goes to church every week and in fact has done almost sort of missionary work uh, after he retired as an accountant. So I was brought up with a very strict um, Protestant view of what God is and our place next to God. And that consisted of some deity, a guy with a beard, telling us what to do, marking us on our behavior and hopefully granting us uh, entrance into heaven. Now, a lot of you, Jackman's answer on that, I like also because it's just a simple explanation of his understanding that God does exist. But what stands out to me about that segment that you just saw is that the interviewer, I didn't like, I, I didn't like the question or, or the comment he said about, so you don't see God as a bearded chap in the sky telling us what to do. I thought that, uh, I sensed in my spirit that that was like a mocking thing. Like the interviewer is mocking Christianity. That's my opinion. If, if he's not, if, if you're not, if, if the interviewer sees this movie, this video, and that's not your what you were doing, I apologize, but you know what? It came across to me that way. 
in a because it, it sounds when you say a beard chap in the sky telling us what to do it sounds it sounds mocking because because it's like we 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 think with our natural minds you know because our feet are planted on the ground so like like can anybody like stand on a cloud so it's somebody that's thinking from a human standpoint human viewpoint uh, and what is really interesting to me is that a lot of people, most people in this world that are lost, that don't know Jesus Christ, who, who, where Jesus has not been revealed in them, they have no problem believing in aliens, <laughs> right? They, they got no problem believing in little green men and from other planets, <laughs> but not in a bearded chap in the sky telling us what to do. <laughs> so. Has anybody ever seen a little green man? <laughs> I know there are reports, you know, the Area 51 and all that stuff, but has anyone ever seen a little green man? I haven't. I've seen demons in the spirit realm. I've engaged demons many, many times. In fact, it, little green men or any kind of alien that would ever show up, I can, I can almost guarantee you that they are uh, demonic. They're unclean spirits, fallen angels, the Bible says that angels can take any form that they want. So it's a great deception that may be coming where, where fallen angels take the form of aliens and they pretend they're coming from another planet with a new uh, doctrine, a new theology. This is what, this is how you began. This is, we, we seeded you, all that, all that uh, blah, blah, blah gibberish. And so that's why I see that as a mocking statement on the interviewer's part because of all that that most of the un the lost world has no problem believing in little green men <laughs> you know and so but you jackman now you jackman he he answered and he, he laughed but i think he just gave a pat answer that that most people in hollywood would give and because they know that it's uh they don't they don't want to they're not surrendered to Jesus Christ uh, because because part of the question was uh, a, a bearded chapman guy telling us what to do now that's another thing I want to address telling us what to do I, I don't understand why anybody in this world has a problem with somebody telling you a, a deity telling you what to do when you you've been told what to do your entire life be honest and take a look at your life and you can see that there's been somebody telling you what to do your entire life all right so why is this something offensive to people what's offensive is that they don't like what they're being told that's the problem and because they don't want to surrender to jesus christ and the thing i have to say about that is that i don't understand it's it's Beyond my comprehension as to what problem people have with Jesus Christ, what is the issue? When you read the Gospels, what is there not to love about Jesus Christ? He tells us to do what is right. He tells us to, to love people, to forgive people. He tells us to, to not cheat, to not murder, to not steal. Who has a problem with this? And so telling so when God tells us these things he's telling us these things for our own good so that we will enjoy a a very nice peaceful life when you obey God in his laws and his commands you enjoy great peace and in fact that's one of the things that you Jackman likes about life and that when you when you do the right thing and he understands this you can enjoy uh, peace. I think around about 14 or 15 was when I started to kind of, and I, I, by the way, I fully bought it. I would say I was a born again Christian. And, and I remember at the time, in fact, someone saying to me, you know, most of you who are here at church, by the time you're 21, 22, will fall away from this. And it's a sad fact, but very few will stay on that narrow path. And I remember thinking, there's no way. I'll be one of those. There's no way. I'm not going to fall away. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be one of those. 
and I have. <laughs> but funnily enough, I probably feel like the path to uh, discovering um, why we're here, who we are, what it's all about, is truly a narrow path. I don't think many people follow it. Um, but around 14 or 15 was when I thought my father's idea and this church's idea of what God is it just doesn't make sense. How can only 5% of the world be admitted into heaven under these laws? Why, why is it that they're largely wealthy white people are the only people sort of heading there? So again, I like some of you's answer in this, especially the narrow path part, because it is a narrow road, you know, but he was definitely a victim of a misrepresentation. I guess it was just like every church, there was wrong teaching in that church. And so he came away thinking that most people are going to hell. And a lot of, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of a contra contradictory thing that he said, because he acknowledges that it's a narrow path, but then he wonders why so few, be so few people are going to heaven. So few people are going to heaven, not because of God, God says that everyone is welcome. He, it's not his will for any man to perish. It's your choice. People have the choice. And it gets back to my, my response on the last segment where it's like what, what God tells you to do is for your own benefit. And ha, how does anybody on this planet have a problem with, with God's laws. Don't don't murder, don't steal, don't cheat. <laughs> you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Love Jesus, follow Jesus. Jesus went around doing good, healing people, casting demons out of people, telling people to love people. It, it's it's incredible. The evil deception of Satan deceiving people about Jesus Christ. No. Humble yourself and read the Bible and and then from a pure heart receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he won't let you down. He, you had mentioned how he didn't understand how only a like a small, very small percentage of people go to heaven that seem like wealthy white people. <laughs> I thought that was a, a funny comment because it seems like wealthy white people, at least nowadays, wealthy white people would make up a small segment of people that are in heaven <laughs> because of all the corruption in America coming from wealthy white people. So uh, not that there's anything wrong with wealthy white people. You can be wealthy and get into heaven, but of course it's not easy because money has a very powerful corrupting effect on people, although it's possible. You have to see money as a tool and you got to see yourself as a conduit of that money where you're it's coming in and going right back out again to help people this this whole life is about Jesus Christ and helping people to to know him and to be able to make it through this life without uh, living in the gutter Jesus promises an abundant life in every way abundance and so uh, it, it's heaven is open to everybody god welcomes everyone he's not it's not god who's rejecting anybody it's not his will for any man to perish but for all men to come to a knowledge of the truth and so be saved so it, it's man that rejects god and so i hope that at this point since this is an old interview with you jackman i, I really hope that he's already born again now or or soon will be so keep you jackman in prayer I'm going to end this video now because it's a long, a long video and there's more to this interview and I'll, I'll do another video uh, perhaps uh, on this with further things that you says in my responses. So God bless you. Thanks for watching and, and continue watching here because there's a little segment now here after this video with my wife Ahava and I talking about an upcoming ministry trip to California. So thanks for watching. Hello friends, my name is Tom Fisher. This is my dear wife, Ahava. We're from Florida. I'm an ordained minister and the pastor of Cardboard Box Church, which is a mobile church 
And we're coming to Triumphant Life Church in Alameda, California on Saturday and Sunday, May 15th and 16th, 2021. We're going to be teaching on ministering in the power of the Holy Spirit in the marketplace. And the marketplace is anywhere in public. So we look forward to seeing you. We're excited. We're expecting great things. And we'll see you then. Jesus is Lord. Amen.